Well, it's November the 7th. It's finally November. I know. Crazy, right? We made it to November. Now college football is rapidly, rapidly going down the slope and towards the end of the road. Yes, the Grinch is gone. That is the first thing we got to get off our chest here. USC, once again, you know, didn't have the greatest game. They lost to Washington by 10 in a shootout in which Michael Penix and Caleb Williams just balled out. Both both guys were balling out. And, you know, Grinch finally got the can. It, it was it it was it was eight or nine games too late. It just just this should have happened at the end of last season. I don't understand how Lincoln Riley had the thought process of keeping this man around for, you know, most of the season. You know, it didn't make any sense at the time, and it doesn't make any sense now why he was there as long as he was. Just, this this has been a complete waste of Caleb Williams' time. I'll say that much right now. A complete waste of that offense's time, which has been magical for a good chunk of the season. Yeah, there's been some games like Notre Dame where they haven't done, you know, very well, but you know, that that's the outlier, not what what is usually expected from USC with this high powered offense. And it's just just it's just sad, really, to see USC, you know, kinda eh, again. Um Missouri you know, same thing with them. They kind of kept up for a while, but again, you know, Georgia, once Georgia goes full Georgia on you, there's nothing you can do to stop them. Turnovers, costing mistakes, you know, the, the whole nine yards when facing Georgia as a top, you know, 15 team. And then Ollie Gordon, Alex Bowman, they, they were key in helping Mike Gundy and the Pokes win the final Bedlam for the foreseeable future, and Oklahoma State, yeah, I, I get it. There was some ref ball in this game, but, you know, at the end of the day, Oklahoma just needed to convert. That's all I'm going to say on that front. And plus, Oklahoma needed to make the plays when they needed to make the plays. They did not make the plays when they needed to make the plays. You know, it, it's just it's just, it's just, just how the cookie crumbles. You know, people are going to be talking about that, but, oh, well, it was – this uh, pass interference call or whatever, you know, or yada, yada, yada. Who cares at this point? This was expect. I expected Oklahoma to lose another game at, at some point in November, and I didn't think it'd be right now. You know, I expected them to lose. And this this definitely was the best time for them to lose another game because I just don't I just don't see it. You know, I, don't, I didn't see it. I didn't see the fire in this team when they played SMU. I didn't see the fire in them when they did beat Texas. You know, keep in mind, Oklahoma still, and I've been talking about this for two months now, that Oklahoma doesn't really have anything besides from Dylan Gabriel. Nothing. You know, yeah, the guy, yeah, the guys can produce, but Dylan Gabriel's the only guy that wants to step up in crunch time, and everybody else does not want to. So, like, come on. Speaking of Texas, they survive against Kansas State. In a defensive thriller in overtime, you know, well, more so at the tail end of that game, you know, uh, Texas was up 27 to 7, only scored six points the rest of the way. Malik Murphy was not that guy yet again. Again, he did okay against BYU, but he looked a little bit worse against Kansas State, and it might be time, you know, to try and see if Quinn Ewers can, you know, get some reps in and see what he can do, you know, for the final couple of games. TCU, Iowa State, and um, Texas Tech, and again the Big Twelve right now is still in a still in a crosshairs. You know, you have Oklahoma, you have Oklahoma State, you have Kansas still. Yes, the Jayhawks is still in this thing. Oklahoma, um, you know, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, Texas, Oklahoma. You know, all, all these teams are still in the mix for the Big Twelve championship. So it's not over yet. And then the SEC West. Maybe closer to being decided as, you know, Jalen Milrow outduels Jay Daniels with his feet. You know, it, it's crazy how Milrow was able to run all over the LSU defense like that. But I kind of expected something like that to happen with the way LSU's defense is playing. Same thing for Jay Daniels. I expected Jay Daniels to, you know, 
put up some magical numbers against Alabama, and yet LSU still lost by two touchdowns. They still lost by two touchdowns. Jay Daniels, I don't think he finished the game. You know, it, it was it was rough for LSU at times. Now LSU, you can pretty much write them off as far as you know an SEC crown is concerned. They lost to Ole Miss. They lost to Alabama. They are done. It is down to Alabama and Ole Miss. And, you know, Alabama's going to need to lose two SEC games. So I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, Notre Dame, yet again, I don't know how this Notre Dame team struggled against Clemson and lost again. You know, you know, you know something's wrong with Phil Moffa, the secondary back for Clemson, who got shifted to the primary role, I guess. I guess, uh, I've forgotten. Again, un- uh, Clemson's uninspiring, so I've been kind of, you know, keeping my eye off of them for weeks now. But yeah, Moffa ran for like 100 plus yards against Notre Dame. Crazy, crazy stuff. Um, and then you have Air Force getting smacked around by Army. They had six turnovers and Tulane struggling against East Carolina. So that kind of worries me. They're the only group of five team ranked right now, Tulane. And then Florida State, they are in the ACC Championship. Good for them. They are back to where they need to be, the ACC Championship. And the slate this week, oh, it's an interesting one. Oh, boy. We got Thursday night football being relevant, you know, for the first time in a while uh, with a Virginia-Louisville game. Virginia sneaky could could be a team that could upset Louisville. That's a sneaky type of game. And then Saturday, yeah. Two top ten showdowns. You have Michigan, Penn State early. Couple that you know, you know, you have your main dish of Michigan, Penn State early. You know, put a little side dish of Alabama, Kentucky. That's going to be pretty interesting as well. Um, and then you have Utah, Washington, a top twenty matchup, along with Tennessee, Missouri. But Tennessee, Missouri isn't really as intriguing now. Um, it would have been, you know, maybe last week if Missouri was able to beat Georgia. But it's lost a little luster, and I'll talk about Tennessee and what they need to do in a little bit. But Utah-Washington, very fun matchup. Miami-Florida State as well. That rivalry. You see Iowa's ranked. You see Kansas State still ranked in there, and they're playing on ESPN+, Plus, which is that's the Baylor station at this point. Um, and then late, late in, the, in the evening, you have a, the top 10 matchup of Ole Miss and Georgia. And, I mean, man, this is going to be interesting. Of course, Ohio State is playing late. Texas is playing late. You will see an Oregon duke it out in Pac-12 after dark. So that is going to be something. So so the Connor Stallion storyline, I haven't even talked about that because, again, it's been the sign-stealing thing. It's been so irrelevant to me that I'm just like, okay, he's been basically fired at this point. Central Michigan's gotten involved. The NCAA's gotten involved. There could be suspensions. There could be fines. You know, there's just all sorts of different loopholes and, and nonsense going on with that storyline of Connor Stallions stealing signs and stealing plays from other teams. And it's just like, I, I don't even know at this point. It's too convoluted to talk about. I'm just not, I, I just have no interest in talking about it. But I do have an interest in talking about what J.J. McCarthy and the Michigan Wolverines are going to be able to do against Drew Aller and Penn State. Now, Penn State's defense is still pretty good. The offense against Ohio State was not. And the offense of the Drew Aller is going to have to step it up. They have to step it up. You know, yeah, Michigan and Penn State have split like the last 14 or so meetings. But at the same time, this, this is the chance for James Franklin to get it right. If he can get it right and beat Mish, then, I mean, that that's all good and dandy. He has to right the ship, though. I don't know if he can do it against a dominant Michigan defense that, you know, again, has not been tested at all this year. They have not been tested at all. Um, so we'll see two really good defenses. This will be another low-scoring game, I imagine. If Michigan beats Penn State, oh boy, the game is going to look, the game is going to be for all the marbles yet again. I'll, I'll tell you that much. And again, Tennessee, they have to stay in the SEC East race against Missouri. Brady Cook is not going to be, you know, an easy out 
for Tennessee's defense. Tennessee's defense is really, really good for the most part. It's just the offense is a little inconsistent with under Joe Milton. But it, it, something has to give. Tennessee has to stay in this race. But yes, CEs, they have to win this game against Missouri. And they have to beat Georgia. They can if they can't win these next two games over the next two weeks, then something's wrong. Something's very, very wrong. Josh Heupel has to get his boys ready. And speaking of Georgia, they will be playing Ole Miss. Ole Miss still trying to get, you know, a way into the SEC championship. But again, you have to have Alabama lose twice at this point. And that is not looking like it's going to happen. It may happen, but it may not. So, you know. The opportunity and the firepower is there. But again, we saw what happened with Missouri. They had the firepower. They had all the stuff to, you know, rock and sock Georgia for like three quarters. But once that fourth quarter hit, Georgia put them to bed. Put put them to bed, knocked them out, put them to sleep. So Ole Miss has to have it. Jackson Dart, you know, Lane Kiffin has to play his A game. Can't have a game like Alabama where you – stumble the entire way you know you you had it for like maybe 15 minutes at best and then you stumble the last three or four hours of the game so that something's got to give there washington defense has been great you know the past few weeks has not been great at all you know like Penix, it's mike Penix, heisman contending leader at this point but they have to be physical against Utah, who is not going to do them any favors because they're physical on defense, too. They will give you a dogfight. Um, yes, the Oregon game was kind of an outlier for Utah. Yes, Oregon State was also kind of, you know, a game where Utah really didn't have any control of that at all. But Utah is still a physical enough team. They still have a little bit of offense that can keep Washington, you know, under control. So something's got to give here. Speaking of, you know, something's got to give Oregon and Bo Nix. You know, they're, they're still behind Washington in the top 25, and they need to keep winning like they have been winning. Um, they struggled a little against Cal early, but they pulled away and pulled away pr pretty easily. And USC is not going to be easy. Again, the Pac-12, with the way the Pac-12 is playing this year, it's not going to be an easy game against USC. Um, USC, they have basically an interim DC right now, so um, they're looking for a new one. So Oregon at USC, there's going to be a lot of points scored in this game, and you know, you know, this could end the same way as last, you know, game for USC in which they lose to Washington in a shootout, or USC could actually do the thing and upset Oregon. It could be possible. We'll see. And then James Madison, just let them go bowling at this point. That's all I got to say. Just let James Madison go bowling at this point. I'm begging y'all. Please.